Today is Thursday, September 14th. We have an update about Hurricane Lee's latest track as it gets closer to the U.S. What watches and warnings are now in place. Also, a weeks-long manhunt is finally over. How the dangerous fugitive was caught. Plus, which state is actually discouraging COVID shots? Why NFL players are calling for natural grass fields instead of artificial turf. And there are now journalism jobs focusing entirely on two of the biggest pop stars, the type of job usually just reserved for the president. Those stories and much more news to know next. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Much of the New England coastline is now under either a hurricane or tropical storm watch. And with that, people who live there are being told to use caution as Hurricane Lee heads their way. Today, it's actually Bermuda that's expected to get the brunt of Lee. After that, forecasters say it looks like the hurricane will keep heading north and likely make landfall anywhere between Maine and Nova Scotia. And this is still a big storm that's expected to get bigger. So no matter where it actually makes landfall, Impacts are expected throughout New England and Atlantic Canada as soon as tomorrow. Though the exact amount of rainfall, flooding, and force of winds will depend on what happens over the next couple of days. Already, some National Guard soldiers are being deployed just in case. That nearly two-week-long manhunt involving hundreds of law enforcement officers, drones, and helicopters has finally come to a close. The fugitive was captured by a police dog. Remember, we told you about the convicted killer who escaped from a Pennsylvania jail? Over the last couple of weeks, he had been spotted multiple times. And more than once, authorities thought they had him, only to have him elude capture again. Well, that changed yesterday when a group of officers surrounded him in a densely wooded suburb of Philadelphia. Officers say the fugitive tried to crawl away through the underbrush, which he had been able to do before. But this time, a search dog named Yoda got him. He still had the rifle he had stolen from a nearby garage, but was arrested with no shots fired. Now he's going to be taken to a Pennsylvania state prison to serve out his life sentence for murder. And he'll also face more charges over the escape. It's looking more and more likely the case over hundreds of thousands of young immigrants, known as Dreamers, will end up back before the U.S. Supreme Court. For the second time now, a federal judge ruled against the DACA program, this time calling it unlawful. This is just the latest in a long-running legal battle over DACA, which stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. Remember, former President Trump first put it in place back in 2012. It protects undocumented immigrants who came to the U.S. as children, letting them live and work in the U.S. legally. Now, the federal judge was siding with Texas and eight other conservative states that sued to put an end to DACA, deciding that former President Obama did not have the power to start the program when he did and that he should have instead gone through Congress. Ultimately, this latest decision just leaves the program the way it is already, meaning new applicants cannot be accepted. But the Dreamers who are already benefiting from the program will get to stay. Biden and his Justice Department are expected to again appeal this decision, and eventually it could make its way back up to the Supreme Court. The last time the high court ruled on DACA was in 2020, when it would not allow the Trump administration to cancel the program. But they also did not rule on the legality of DACA itself. And now that seems to be the question justices might need to answer. So to be continued. A high-profile American senator has decided to retire, and he called on other politicians of his generation, specifically naming President Biden and former President Trump, to do the same. Senator and one-time GOP presidential candidate Mitt Romney is now 76 years old. He referenced his age in his retirement announcement, then said, quote, Frankly, it's time for a new generation of leaders. They're the ones that need to make the decisions that shape the world they will be living in. And then he directly addressed the two frontrunners of the 2024 presidential race— 80-year-old President Biden and 77-year-old former President Trump. He said neither one of them is up to the biggest challenges America faces now. In response, former President Trump wrote on Truth Social that Romney's retirement is, quote, fantastic news for America. Meanwhile, President Biden called Romney just minutes after his retirement announcement. That phone call was off the record, but reporters say it seemed friendly. Now, Romney will stay in the Senate until his term ends in January of 2025, when someone new will take a seat. Florida has become the first state to actually discourage most of its residents from getting COVID-19 shots. Governor Ron DeSantis and the state's top health department official say they would only recommend the new shots for people 65 and older. They say there's not enough evidence to show the vaccine's benefits outweigh the risks. 
And that's even though just this week, the CDC said it recommended the shots for everyone six months and older. Both the FDA and CDC have published data from trials that show the vaccines have proven to be mostly effective and safe. And the federal agencies still say vaccination is the best protection against COVID-19 related hospitalizations and death. But Florida's top health official says at this point, everyone has some level of immunity already and that there should have been more research into the shots. By the way, vaccine or not, COVID-19 is expected to get more common this fall and winter. And if you have any leftover at-home testing kits that say they're expired, they might actually still be okay to use. We'll get into that later in this episode for our Thing to Know Thursday. More news is still coming up, but first, a quick break for our sponsor, keeping this show free to you. My husband and I are actually in the process of buying a home, and while we are so excited, there are also a lot of costs. So it would have been really nice to be able to consider saving more for that big purchase through my everyday spending. It's possible if I would have known sooner about the Rocket Visa Signature Card. The Rocket Visa Card is actually the first credit card designed for homeownership, allowing you to earn rewards on every single purchase from dining to travel and everything in between. And not only can you redeem your rewards for up to 5% cash back toward closing costs and a down payment when you buy a home with Rocket Mortgage, but you can also earn 2% cash back toward your Rocket Mortgage balance after you buy a home. Apply for the Rocket Visa card today at rocketcard.com slash newsworthy and get up to 5% cash back on every purchase toward a new loan with Rocket Mortgage. rocketcard.com slash newsworthy for up to 5% cash back toward your new home from Rocket Mortgage when you're approved rocketcard.com slash newsworthy. All Rocket Visa signature cards are powered by Deserve and issued by Celtic Bank, a Utah chartered industrial bank member FDIC. Terms and conditions apply. Visit www.rocketcard.com to learn more. Okay, now back to the news. The biggest tech giants in the world were on Capitol Hill this week. They took part in a closed door meeting with more than 60 U.S. senators who are considering how to regulate artificial intelligence. And in the end, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says every person in that room agreed the government needs to play a role in regulating AI, including more than 20 tech CEOs, prominent civil rights advocates, and consumer advocates. The discussion apparently covered many different aspects of how AI might transform society for better or worse. Like Microsoft founder Bill Gates said it could be used to solve hunger. But one AI researcher says she brought up immediate concerns like biased decisions in housing, hiring, or criminal sentencing. Afterward, Tesla, SpaceX, and ex-CEO Elon Musk said, quote, I think this meeting could go down in history as important to the future of civilization. But as the Washington Post reports, there was not a lot of consensus about exactly what AI regulation should look like. And Schumer apparently made it clear lawmakers are at least months away from unveiling any real legislation. But even without it, the tech industry is forging ahead with AI. Two major casino operators are dealing with the fallout from big cyber attacks. First, it was Caesars Entertainment that apparently paid about half of a $30 million ransom that hackers demanded. That one is said to have happened a couple of weeks ago. Then it was MGM Resorts, including some of the most iconic ones in Las Vegas, like the Bellagio and Mandalay Bay. Over the weekend, slot machines, sports betting kiosks, digital keys for hotel rooms, online reservations, and credit card transactions were all down. And some systems were still down yesterday for a third straight day. Though it's still not clear exactly what the hackers were able to access or whether MGM paid a ransom. New rules from the Nevada Gaming Commission require casinos report cyber attacks within 72 hours and take steps to safeguard their systems. A season-ending injury that sidelined a big-name NFL quarterback has now reignited a debate in the NFL. The NFL Players Association called for the league to change all of its field surfaces to natural grass. It comes in the wake of the Jets' new QB, Aaron Rodgers, getting hurt on artificial turf Monday night in his regular season debut with his new team. His leg was planted in the turf while trying to spin away from a Bills player, and his Achilles ruptured. While many players and the Players Association blame the turf, saying natural grass is safer. Though not everyone agrees natural grass would have prevented it. And in response, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell told ESPN the turf grass debate is a complex issue that the NFL will keep addressing with the union. The largest American newspaper chain is apparently planning to cover pop superstars the same way it does the president. 
Gannett says it's hiring one full-time Taylor Swift reporter and one full-time Beyonce Knowles Carter reporter. Having a dedicated journalist assigned to just one person is typically reserved for the president of the United States or presidential candidates, and rarely to anyone else, especially as newsrooms are shrinking. But there has been huge interest in Swift and Beyonce, especially this summer during their record-breaking tours. So now Gannett, which owns more than 200 daily newspapers, including USA Today, says it's looking for reporters who can capture the significance of the pop star's music, their growing legacies, and the effect both women have had across the music world. The new job postings have sparked some mixed reactions. Some have praised Gannett for trying to reach new audiences. But others are criticizing the company's priorities, especially since it cut a lot of reporter jobs last December. Of course, this is just the latest example of how Taylor Swift and Beyonce are now ingrained into the culture. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Thing to Know Thursday. But first, this episode is brought to you by Trust and Will. As you may know, part of the reason I started this podcast was to help people feel informed, but not overwhelmed, and to feel prepared, but not scared or anxious. And I have that same idea in mind when I think about how to secure my family's future. I don't need to fear the future, but I do want to feel prepared. And with Trust and Will, I appreciate that we were able to create an estate plan to ensure our family is prepared and protected without having to spend a lot of time or money. Trust and Will has simplified the process of creating and managing a will or trust online from finding out what's right for your family to finalizing documents with a notary. My husband and I recently crafted our will and were pleasantly surprised at how simple it was, how quickly we were able to complete it, and that it guided us through things we may not have thought about on our own. And yet, plans start at just $159. So gain peace of mind today with Trust and Will. Get 10% off plus free shipping of your estate plan documents by visiting trustandwill.com slash newsworthy. That's 10% off and free shipping at trustandwill.com slash newsworthy. Okay, now back to Thing to Know Thursday. So you might want to think twice before throwing away old COVID-19 tests, even if the box says they've passed their expiration date. The federal government has actually extended the shelf lives of some testing kits. So how does that work exactly? Well, generally, the FDA authorizes at-home test kits with a shelf life of about four to six months. But that shelf life can be extended if the manufacturer finds more data showing the tests are still accurate beyond those dates. And that's what happened here with some of the most popular kits and some that the federal government sent out for free. The FDA has listed on its website the exact ones that have been extended. So we'll add that link to today's episode notes. That said, if your expired kit is not on that list, it's not recommended to use it. The parts could degrade or break down over time, leading to an inaccurate or invalid test result. So if your expired test really is still expired, you can buy new ones online or at many retailers and pharmacies, or some local health departments may still offer them for free. All right, thank you so much for listening today. A quick reminder that if you get value out of this show, it really helps us out if you tell other people about it. Thank you in advance. We appreciate you. We'll catch you up on more news to know tomorrow. Until then, have a great day.